What we Templars know is that despite exhortations otherwise, the people don't want real freedom and true responsibility because these things are too great a burden to bear and only the very strongest minds can do so. Francois de la Serre, 1775 Hello and welcome to Visions of the Past. My name is Andrew and I'm the host of this Assassin's Creed lore podcast. This is episode 41, and today we're going to talk about the Templar Grandmaster, Francois de la Serre. Because you can learn a lot about a person from their name, let's see where de la Serre got his roots. Francois is an ethnic name that means Frenchman. De la means of the, and was often used as part of a noble family's title. His family name, Serre, translates to Greenhouse. His family heritage goes back to before the 18th century in the historic French region of Landoc. That means Francois de la Serre was likely from a minor or middle class noble family that was known for horticulture or gardening. Unlike some of the other characters in Assassin's Creed, Francois de la Serre is not based on a real historical figure. He only exists in the Assassin's Creed world, and we first met him in a cameo in Assassin's Creed Rogue. Later, we see him in his only full role in Assassin's Creed Unity, and in the novel of the same name. He was born in 1733 to a family of minor French noblemen that held and passed down the position of Templar Grand Master of the Parisian Rite of the Templar Order for generations. At some point before 1768, he married fellow Templar by the name of Julie and acquired his estate in Versailles and his smaller home in Paris, France. He would eventually rise to the rank of Grand Master himself and father a daughter with Julie, whom they named Elise, in 1768. He also became a close confidant of King Louis XVI and mentor of the Parisian assassins, Honoré Gabriel Racchetti, Comte de Mirabeau. When assassin Charles Dorian was murdered in December of 1776, Monsieur de la Serre adopted Dorian's son, Arno. At the request of his family, de la Serre did not try to bring Arno into the Templar order, but did ask his daughter Elise to influence him into joining their cause. While his wife Julie started to deteriorate due to an unknown illness, de la Serre began to spend more time with Arno, taking him hunting, and even arranged Arno's timetable to take educational lessons from the governor so he could have the same education as Elise. Sometime before 1788, de la Serre's lieutenant, Francois Thomas Germain, started to put forward radical ideas that included supporting the idea of a violent revolution. After de la Serre tried to persuade Germain to abandon the ideas to no avail, he expelled Germain from the Templar order. About a year later, Leroy de Thun, the king of beggars, appealed to de la Serre for a position in the order, but was rebuffed by de la Serre stating that he had no use for the intrigues of rats. This interaction caused Leroy de Thun's to seek out and pledge himself to Germain's radical fraction and vow to kill de la Serre. During the historic Estates General of 1789, an assembly that was divided by social class that advised the king, de la Serre was a delegate for the nobility of the Second Estates in France. During the meetings of the Estates General, Mirabeau and de la Serre would build from their known common ground of a peaceful France without violence and form a truce between the Templars and the Assassins. Even though de la Serre didn't think the truce would last, the other Templars refused to accept the truce, especially Cretan La Finiere, who believed that Mirabeau could not be trusted. On May 5, 1789, de la Serre put together a party for the induction of his daughter Elise into the Templar order. After Elise's formal ceremony was over, Monsieur de la Serre was called to the gardens by Charles Gabriel Severe. When de la Serre arrived, he asked Severo what was so important to take him from the ceremony. Severo's answer was a punch to the stomach. De La Serre would rally quickly and headbutt Severo, following up by slashing him in the left eye with a sword. With De La Serre distracted by Severo, Leroy de Thun was able to sneak up behind him and impale him with a poisoned laced Templar pin. As the two made their escape, Arno entered the garden and watched as Monsieur De La Serre succumbed to the poison. Severe called out to the guards about a murder, pinning their crime on Arno, which led to Arno's imprisonment in the Bastille. After the death of de la Serre, 
at the young age of 56, the Templar Order split into two factions, Felice leading the conservative faction that her father led, and Germain heading up an extremist order that encouraged the rise of the lower classes at the expense of the aristocracy. We don't get a lot of time with Francois de la Serre in Assassin's Creed Unity, but he is an extremely important character as his death is the catalyst for the story of the game, eventually driving Arno into the arms of the assassins and Elise into the leadership of the Templar Order. As a character in his own right, we don't really know a lot about de la Serre outside of his truce with the assassins and that he wanted a peaceful resolution to the civil unrest that was going on in France during the time. One thing that I really don't understand, though, is why would he want to adopt Arno? I can understand that he admired Charles Dorian, even though he was an assassin, because there's a history of collaboration among Templars and assassins within the series. One example is with Otto Berg, a Templar who admired the assassins that he worked with while taking down Juno, but I don't see Berg being so full of admiration as to be willing to raise one of their kids if they had died. You could argue that de la Serre just wanted to deny the assassins a soldier and try to mold him, but at this time in history and with what we see in the beginning of Unity, that seems unlikely to me. I think it's more likely that Monsieur de la Serre knew that Arno and Elise were love interests and as they grew older, was okay with it because he was the one that raised him, even though Arno was vastly different than Elise and even more troublesome. I do admit that there is a lot about Francois de la Serre that we don't know from these stories that could be told. More about why he pushed for a truce with the assassins, or anything about his time as a minor noble and Templar before his rise to Grand Master, especially considering he was on a list of targets, along with Reginald Birch and Hatham Kenway at the Davenport Homestead in 1756, when de la Serre was just 23 a full 20 years before he even took Arno as his ward. Though, I do admit that it's probably only meant as an Easter egg to tie Assassin's Creed Rogue to Assassin's Creed Unity. Are these stories that we're likely ever going to hear about? No, probably not. We already have a good number of stories set within the 18th century that we'll probably never return to, even if it's a novel or a comic. There's just so much more to this character that we don't know that I would love to learn more about. Thank you for joining me today. Be sure to tune in every Tuesday for new episodes. If you love the Visions of the Past podcast, I'd love for you to subscribe, rate, and give a review on Apple Podcasts. If you have any questions about Assassin's Creed or topics that you'd like me to cover, please feel free to hit me up on Twitter and Instagram at visions underscore AC. You can find those links in this episode's show notes. Until next time, my assassin friends, make sure to follow the creed. And to those Templars listening, may the Father of Understanding guide you.